Hello friends, it is Saturday, April 8th. Welcome to the start of Slayer Fest week number two. I hope that the readathon is going really, really well for you. I know that it is going well for me. I have just recently started book number five, which is The Silent Sister by Diane Chamberlain. I discussed it a little bit at the very end of the last vlog, but I wanted to go ahead and talk about it more here since I'm now way further into it. In fact, I think I'm like over halfway at this point. So this book is following our main character, Riley. Her father has recently passed away, and so she's having to go back to the town where she was raised in order to settle his estate. Like she has to go through his stuff and sell his house and she's definitely running into some obstacles because she has an older brother but he is not helping her with anything. He definitely has some mental health issues. I'm pretty sure that he has some PTSD and it seems like he has some issues with their family where she was really close to her dad and their mom. He seems to have some negative feelings about them and he also has a lot of negative feelings regarding their sister Lisa who when she was 17 years old she was said to have committed suicide and Riley never really knew her because because she was only two years old when Lisa committed suicide. But Danny remembers a lot about that time and he's got a lot of bad feelings about it. And so there's a lot going on with Danny and he is not willing to help Riley take care of the estate of their father or anything like that. So she is definitely in over her head. She is overwhelmed and it doesn't help that as she starts to get things ready, she's uncovering a lot of secrets, especially a lot of secrets that her dad kept. She's realizing that she didn't know him as well as she thought. And she realizes that there might be more to Lisa's suicide than meets the eye. And she She's also being told that her family might not be who she thinks they are. So there's a lot of stuff going on with poor Riley. I don't really want to say a lot more about it, especially with how Lisa's storyline relates to the current day, because that would be spoilers. But so far, I am loving this. Like, I don't want to stop reading it. It's one of those stories that I feel like you can just fly through because you just want to know what happened. Diane Chamberlain is just currently an all-star author for me. I have loved the last two books that I read from her, which were more historical fiction than anything. And so far, she has proven that she can also write like a really solid mystery and I'm here for it. I am completely in and I am completely invested. Also, I don't know if I've mentioned this in the last vlog, but I am currently physically reading Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. I started that at the very beginning of the readathon because I knew that it was going to take me months to finish it. It is over a thousand pages. It takes a lot of time and mental energy to read it because it is a very complicated and dense fantasy world. And so I'm really just slowly plugging away at it when I can. I have a really hard time sitting down and reading books. It's a really Really hard for me to have a calm mind in order to do that and I can never just let myself be in the mood to read it doesn't happen so I know that way of kings is going to take me a really long time but I read it when I can I pick it up here and there and I'm really enjoying it when I do have an opportunity to read it that's just like few and far between so that's the book that I'm going to be reading physically and for the most part I think it's going to be the only book that I'm reading physically but so far the readathon is going very very strong like I said I'm into book five and I will hopefully be finishing that if not tomorrow which is Sunday then early on Monday and I'll be able to start the next book I have to go ahead and finish exporting and uploading the former week's vlog and clean up the dinner mess, finish laundry, do all the normal adulting things one does on a Saturday, but I will check in when I have more of a reading update. y'all it is saturday evening i came home to two bookish packages so i thought i would go ahead and just unbox them here in this vlog for you especially since one is the final authentic books box that i'm actually going to be getting and i'm not going to be doing a separate video for it and the other is the march adult fairy loot so let's go ahead and start with fairy loot all right so the theme is rotten opulence and let's see what the book is Ooh, i see some beautiful sprayed edges holy cow all right, let's get into it. It's upside down. The Foxglove King by Hannah Witten. Okay, I've actually heard about this one. I think I included it in an upcoming release video and it sounded really interesting. I definitely think that this is an exclusive cover. I'll try to remember to overlay the original cover on here, but like y'all, can you even with these sprayed edges? Holy cow, let's see what we got in the dust jacket. Okay, we've got some beautiful end pages there. It says, when Laura was 13, she escaped a cult in the catacombs beneath the city of Dallaire. Okay, that's right cult buzzword 
we're good. And in the 10 years since, she's lived by one rule. Don't let them find you. Easier said than done when her magic ties her to the city. Mortem is a magic born from death, and it's a high-priced and illicit commodity in Dallaire. Lore has made a living running poisons for the city's underbelly, but when a run goes wrong, she's captured by the king and expects to be sent to the pyre. But the king has different plans. Lore is thrust into the sainted king's glittering court where no one can be believed and even fewer can be trusted. Guarded by Gabriel, a duke turned monk, and continually running up against Bastion, the king's ne'er-do-well heir, Lore tangles in politics, religion, and forbidden romance as she attempts to navigate a debauched and opulent society. But the life she left behind in the catacombs is catching up with her. And even as Lore makes her way through the sainted court above, danger from below draws even closer. Oh, y'all, this naked hardcover is stunning. Look, oh my gosh, do you see that? Holy cow. Fairy loot has just been killing it with these special editions. Like, I cannot. And then, of course, there's the signature. Like, guys, this is so flipping stunning. All right, now, getting into authentic books, I already know what the book is because I'm able to pre-select what books I receive. So it's going to be Hello Beautiful by Anna Politano, and I'll go ahead and get to the book and, like, what it's about in a second. But first, let's go ahead and run through the items. As always, we get a special bookmark that has a quote from the book. It says, It was hard for me to accept the fact that we don't choose who we love because who you love changes everything. Then we have the note from the author here. Oh, and then you have the little QR code to scan for the playlist. This is new. They haven't had one of these in there before, so that's a nice touch. And then, of course, the spoilery pamphlet that talks about all of the items that are in the box. All right, and the first item I see is a face mask. It is Damas Rose Pure Essence Mask Sheet by Holika Holika Moisturization and Skin Glow. So if you watched the most recent video I did with the last unboxing, I made mention of the fact that I am canceling it just because a lot of the items in these boxes are are very very repetitive and case in point this is another face mask the last time we got a sheet mask i think this is just like a liquid put on your face mask but overall it's still a face mask you know it's still gonna do what face masks do and then of course we got the candle there's always a candle in these boxes it's always made by authentic books i have never really been super impressed by the scents of their candles just because they are super light but what i can smell is usually pretty good the label on this is gorgeous i think that they've definitely upgraded some of their like labeling and things since the last time it's called no bullshit no secrets sense of black rose and oak moss all right let's see oh my gosh okay so that's di that's different as well check that out they're getting really fancy here but still the scent is incredibly light i can barely smell the scent at all in this candle but it's nice it's a nice lovely scent i just wish it were stronger because i'm gonna barely be able to smell this at all okay and then this is the exact same coffee i believe that i got in the last box the white chocolate truffle or something very very similar it's again always authentic books it's not very strong i can't really differentiate the flavors and i'm pretty sure that this is very similar to what i got last time so i will use it i won't waste it. It is what it is. But again, repetitive items over and over and over again. Okay. And then we have a hand sanitizer. It looks like the label got wet and blurry, but it says you can handle this one fluid ounce hand sanitizer. That's definitely different. It's definitely a functional and useful item. So that was a nice touch. And then finally, we're getting into the book, which like I said, is Hello Beautiful by Anne Napolitano. Oh, and I just noticed the seal. I don't think the other books that I've gotten have had like this actual 3D seal on there. So that's kind of interesting. William Waters grew up in a house silenced by tragedy where his parents could hardly bear to look at him, much less love him. So when he meets the spirited and ambitious Julia Padovano in his freshman year of college, it's as if the world has lit up around him. With Julia comes her family, as she and her three sisters are inseparable. With the Padovanos, William experiences a newfound contentment. Every moment in their house is filled with loving chaos. But then darkness from William's past surfaces, jeopardizing not only Julia's carefully orchestrated plans for their future, but the sisters' unshakable devotion to one another. The result is a catastrophic family rift that changes their lives for generations. Will the loyalty that once rooted them be strong enough to draw them back together when it matters most? So this definitely sounds like it's going to have those complex character dynamics that I just eat up in books. I really love a good, solid, character-driven novel. I've heard really great things about Anne Napolitano as an author, and that's why I chose this, and I'm excited to go ahead and have this. But again, this is the very final box that I plan to get from Authentic Books. All right, y'all, that is all that I have for the minute. My oven is dinging, which means dinner is ready, so I have to go see to that. I'll check back in in just a second to kind of update you on what I've been reading. Hello friends, it is Monday, April 10th, and I wanted to go ahead and come on here and give you a reading update since I didn't update basically at all yesterday. Sundays are always a pretty chill day in the fact that we don't leave our house. Like Sunday is very much an at-home day, but it's usually a very busy day, and yesterday was no exception. Typically Sundays are a filming day, so yesterday I filmed two videos. I also worked on getting one edited, and I almost completed it. I just have some final touches to put on tonight. And then of course finishing the laundry, all of the chores, getting things situated 
did, making dinner, all of that stuff. So yesterday was very, very productive. I got a lot done, but there was really just no time to sit down and, and do an update. I did finish The Silent Sister by Diane Chamberlain, and I loved that book. Let me tell you that that book was engaging from start to finish. It was definitely a binge-worthy book. Like, I just wanted to keep reading, and I wanted to know what happened. And this is a story where you are very much finding out things as the main character finds out things. And so because of that, I don't really want to say anything more about the story because I feel like anything I say would risk giving spoilers. But we are following Riley as she's returning to her home to take care of her dad's estate and all of the secrets that she's uncovering primarily as they involve her older sister Lisa's death 23 years prior to the start of the story. I would say the only criticism I have, it's not really a criticism, it's more of a question. My question is concerning the purpose. This isn't a standard suspense thriller where the main character is like in some kind of danger, right? And this isn't a mystery in the fact that the police are trying to solve a whodunit. This is Riley taking on the mystery of something in her past for personal reasons. And then at the end, it's solved or it's not solved. And then that's just kind of it. So that's really my own criticism is that I'm just not sure what the whole point of telling the story was. Although I do say that it was a great story and I really, really enjoyed it. So overall, no real complaints here. I loved my reading experience with this one. So reading that satisfied the prompt of Dawn to read a book featuring a sibling relationship. And this definitely did. And now I'm moving on to Veruca, which is to read a second chance romance. And for that, I'm reading Eleanor and Gray by Brittany C. Cherry. I have never read a Brittany C. Cherry before. The reason why I wanted to go ahead and read this book is because it satisfies another reading challenge where I have to read a book by an author with the same first name. I literally only just started this book on the way to work. So I've listened to maybe less than an hour in total on audio. And I am really, really liking this story so far. I'm loving Brittany C. Cherry's writing. And all I know really about this is that it's about two characters who met when they were teenagers and they probably start a relationship. That's kind of where I am now. I'm getting to know them as teenagers. And then I believe it jumps a few years in the future and Eleanor ends up becoming a nanny and she ends up watching Grayson's kids. So obviously there has been like a lot of time between their teenage relationship and their present day relationship, but I don't really know anything more than that. I just got that from the synopsis because right now I'm still very much in the beginning stages where they are just now meeting and connecting as teenagers. And I'm just really loving Brittany C. Cherry's writing style overall. The banter and stuff is great. And I love Eleanor because she's a very introverted character. Like in this whole first section that I read, all she's really wanting to do is read Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, which just released during the time in which the teenage years are set, which is in the early 2000s. And so Order of the Phoenix was just released. She's desperately trying to read it and all kinds of things are going on. And so I really appreciate that aspect of her. So I am very, very excited to continue. But for now, y'all, you know what I've got to do. It is Monday morning. It is time to get this week started. So I will be sure to check back in when I have another update. Hey y'all, so I was sitting here at work on my lunch break and I was watching a new vlog from Becca and the Books and she was talking about the magical readathon by G from Book Rose. Now this is a readathon that I have heard of many times. It was something that I had considered participating in years ago back when it was still like more based on Harry Potter, like it was the O.W. Wells and the N.E.W.T.s and things like that before she completely changed it. But every single time that the readathon came around, I was not actively filming booktube videos or I was in like some kind of reading slump and just couldn't participate whatsoever. And then this year I have Slayer Fest that's happening during the same month, which was really stupid, y'all. <laughs> really stupid because I kind of went down the rabbit hole after watching Becca in the Books blog and kind of looking into all of the changes that have been made and how I could possibly jump in. And it just looks so much fun. And Lord help me, but I think that I'm going to do it. I think that I'm going to jump in. I know that the spring equinox just started on April 1st. And so I've been kind of looking into what I can do because I have to create my character and I have to go on the novice path and I have to find my guild and like do all of these little things before I can fully jump in and start satisfying prompts for my calling. So I think I'm going to work on that for a little bit and decide what I can do because I've already read five books in April and I think like I can make some of them fit. And then once I get through all of those things, then I could go and select my calling and work on it from there. I think I'm going to have to push it past April because of course I'm doing Slayer Fest and like not everything is going to work out, but I think I'm going to like try to get caught up on the Magical Readathon and try to get involved. So Oof, that's a lot. If you're participating in Magical Readathon, let me know. I'm working on getting all of the details situated right now. It is a complex readathon. I cannot believe that G created this. 
this, her mind is phenomenal. Creativity like this just stresses me out. Like I can't even imagine having that type of ability. I've always been jealous of people who could. And it kind of makes me feel bad about Slayer Fest. Like this version that is happening in 2023 is the most dynamic I've been able to make it. And it is pitiful compared to the Magical Readathon. I'm trying to figure out a way to make it more dynamic, to make it, you know, maybe a little bit more like this role-playing style. That's always been my intention. Like I've always wanted to try to make it that way. And I just don't know how. I'm welcome to any and all feedback that you have about the Readathon to see how I can make it better. And next year, I might try to host it a little bit after Magical Readathon so that more people have the opportunity to participate. I thought that I was doing good hosting it in April instead of October because I know October is very much like Halloween, Spookathon, all of that stuff. And then you're getting into the holidays, which is just crazy no matter what. And so I was like, let's do it in April. It's going to be great. But I completely forgot all about the Magical Readathon. And now I'm feeling FOMO because I'm not participating in the Magical Readathon. That's where my head's at. I just kind of wanted to come on here and update you because I was feeling like a little bit down about Slayer Fest. My skills and abilities are just never going to be up to the standards of G from but gross. Like it's one of those situations where you're kind of like, oh my gosh, why even bother? <laughs> because you're never going to be as good. I know I'm just getting in my head about this, but that's how I'm feeling at the moment. We're in a state, we're in a mood right now, but yeah, I'm going to go get back to work and I'll check in with you later. Okay. So I've been working on this a little while since my last clip and here's what I've got so far. Now keep in mind that this is a highly complicated readathon and I'm only just now diving into it. So I haven't mastered like all of the complexities and I don't fully understand it. So if you want to know all about it and what you have to do, I highly recommend checking out G's channel and the videos. I will try to remember to link them down below for you. But basically like it all kind of takes place at this Aurelium Academy. And in order to reach Aurelium Academy, you have to first do the novice path. Now, I won't say that she has made it very, very clear that in order to participate in the readathon this year, you don't have to go through all this. You can just like basically jump into making your character and, and doing all of the things. You don't have to worry about taking the novice path or, you know, reading all of these prompts or anything like that. But I wanted to go ahead and try to be as authentic as humanly possible before jumping into the calling portion. Over here on the novice path, I had to satisfy two of these challenges. And luckily, out of the books that I have read so far for Slayer Fest or I am reading so far, have satisfied this. I think I'm going to go ahead and use these two out of the dust and silent sister because I'm currently in the progress of way of kings so I haven't actually completed that and spells for forgetting I'm actually going to use down here. This allows me to choose my background as either a wildling or an urban and I'm going to use spells for forgetting for this. On the back here I still have to read the prompt associated with the province I want which is Eurtheria and that's read a book that features fae or elven characters. I'm going to use Deadlands for this and I'm going to be reading that in a couple of books so that will definitely be satisfied in April. So that will be coming up soon. And I will be sure to read that before like jumping into the calling prompts. And then down here, my heritage, I wanted to be an earthling, primarily a water earthling. But in order to be an earthling, all I had to do is read a book with elemental magic. And I actually just satisfied that with when breath becomes air. And then on this page here, the next thing was to gear up. So basically kind of like choose our magical weapon. And since I am going to be in the order of the crescent, um, I have the option to have a quarter staff, which is to read a book that's part of a quartet and so Cress actually works for this because the Lunar Chronicles are four books. So basically every single book so far that I have read in April has worked out really really well for these challenges. All I need to satisfy currently is the province one. I also need to satisfy this for the legacy of my order. I have to pick an animal familiar and read a book that has that animal familiar on the cover or in the title or things like that. I don't think like satisfying this is as important as some of the other things. So I'm pretty much caught up with all of like the beginning stages of that and then I can kind of move on into the prompts that are going to be for my calling which is going to be beast master so as soon as I have that a little bit more figured out I will let y'all know Archibald <laughs> Archibald <laughs> your ear is in my filming space <laughs> Hey everybody, I am home from work in the gym and I'm trying a little bit something new. I have you stationed out here on my little lateral filing cabinet that I have out here in my office space, which is also combined with our living room. I thought it would be good to have like an actual set place that I could come and give you quick updates because I film on my phone. So I don't have like a traditional tripod or anything that I can just like move around and set up a camera with or anything. So this will have to do. But I came home and I had three bookish packages. I know what two of them are because I purchased them, but then the third one is the gift 
what I received as part of a monthly Facebook gifting group. So we are going to see what that is. So I wanted to go ahead and open all of them with you. Okay, so first is a book depository package and I am devastated that they are closing by the way. I was so upset to hear that because that is where I get a lot of the UK editions that I like, but you know, it is what it is. But this is a special anniversary edition of If We Were Villains by ML Rios. That is like my favorite dark academia book of all time. And I had been seeing this around and I was like, I'm just gonna pull the plug. So I purchased it. Let me go ahead and open this and I'll show it to you. Isn't it just so stunning? The only complaint that I have is that it's like one of the UK size hardbacks, which I don't understand what that is about because I receive a lot of UK hardbacks from like Fairy Loot that are normal size. Yet this is like the super small and compact, which I actually was not expecting, but it is still so, so beautiful. Oh look, there's like even end page art and everything like that. So I probably will go ahead and keep it, but because it's just like really, really stunning, but I just wish it was the normal size because this is not gonna match any of the other things. And if you hear that clomping around, that is all over going in and out of this crate. So I'm sorry if that's loud. Okay, and then this must be the gift from Facebook. Let me, let me grab a knife here. Oh, there are two. Oh no, and one of them is actually one I bought myself. The Last of Vanished by Meg Miranda. I read this earlier this year as part of a vlog that I was doing reading the lowest rated books on my TBR. And surprisingly, this is like one of my favorite Meg Miranda's. I have a very hit or miss relationship with her, but I really enjoyed this. And so I ended up buying this for myself, but I didn't take it off my wish list. <sighs> my bad. Oh, I might have to turn right around and put this on Pango. Yikes, I feel really bad for not taking that off my wish list. I've been really, really good about taking things off my wish list that I'm purchasing for myself, but not this one. <laughs> anyway. I really did enjoy this one, this Megan Miranda. So if you haven't read a Megan Miranda and you're looking to start somewhere with her, I would recommend this one, honestly. But this next one I'm super excited about. It is Stay Awake by Megan Golden. I have read Megan Golden's two other stories, The Night Swim and The Escape Room, and I've really enjoyed this. Let me read what it's about. It says, Liv Reese wakes up in the back of a taxi with no idea where she is or how she got there. When she's dropped off at a brownstone, a stranger answers the door, a stranger who claims to live in her apartment. She reaches for her phone to call for help, only to discover it's missing. In its place is a blood-stained night. Her hands are covered in scribbled messages like graffiti on her skin. Stay away. Two years ago, Liv was thriving as a successful writer for a trendy magazine. Now she's lost and disoriented in a New York City that looks nothing like what she remembers. Catching a glimpse of the local news, she's horrified to see reports of a crime scene where the victim's blood has been used to scrawl a message across a window similar to the message that's inked on her hand. What did she do last night? And why does she remember nothing from the past two years? Liv finds herself on the run for a crime she doesn't remember committing, but there's someone who does know exactly what she did, and they'll do anything to make her forget. A complex thriller that unfolds at breakneck speed stay awake will keep you up all night okay so i am super super excited for this one i feel really bad that i didn't take that other one off my wish list but i'm like super grateful that she sent me too because i was not expecting that at all but really 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 glad to have this one and then i got march's aardvark book club and i'm actually really excited about this book this is the first month so this is my third month with aardvark book club but it's the first month that i've actually really been legitimately interested in one or more of the selections that i haven't just like cautiously chosen one this is one that i had never heard of before it's called a likely story by Lee McMullen Abramson. I've never heard of this author, so I don't know. Maybe she is a debut author. Let me see what it says. Yes, this is her first novel. So this just sounded like a really good domestic type of drama, possibly a little bit thrillery. I'm not sure. It says, for Isabel Manning, growing up as the daughter of New York's intellectual it couple was both a blessing and a curse. Her elegant mother, Claire, had a reputation as a whip smart society hostess, while Isabel's father, the incomparable Ward Manning, was the king of the New York Times bestseller list. Having to share Ward with his adoring public wasn't always easy, but at home, Claire ensured that Isabel's child was filled with magic and love. All Isabel has ever wanted as an adult is a career like her father's, but after many false starts and wrecked by grief after Claire's unexpected death, Isabel faces down her 35th birthday alone without a book deal, without her mom, and on the brink of a messy breakdown. When Isabel discovers some shocking truths about her parents, she wonders if the world's rosy image of her famous family was all a lie. Isabel's unfolding drama is punctuated with fragments of a clever book within a book where a righteous female narrator steals back the spotlight from an unscrupulous male artist. The characters seem eerily familiar, but are any of the story's plot rooted in fact? And more mysterious, who is the author? Okay, so I'm a little trepidant about the book within a book type of thing because that typically takes me out of the story. But I'm really excited about this, especially after just finishing The Silent Sister by Diane Chamberlain, which has a lot of the same family drama-esque type things where a daughter finds out that her parents basically have been lying to her her whole life and there's a lot that she has to uncover about her family. So this really intrigues me and I am super hyped to go ahead and get to this whenever I can. So this is a solid pick from Aardvark. All right, y'all, that is the bookish mail that I received. It is dinner time we are preparing for, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started with that right now but I will check in with you when I have a little bit more of a reading update. Hey fam it is once again time for me to head to the gym so I don't have a lot of time but I wanted to just come on here and give you a quick update. I have not yet finished Eleanor and Gray by Brittany C. Cherry. I am almost done. I will definitely finish it tonight but I wanted to just come on and touch upon some things 
things that I'm really enjoying about the story that are somewhat different than things that I've seen in like other romance stories. So this story is actually told slightly differently than I thought it would be. I thought that this was going to be almost entirely set in the present with maybe some flashbacks to the past between Eleanor and Grey. Because basically what happened is Eleanor and Grey met when they were teenagers and they developed a really strong friendship and ultimately it was headed into a different direction. But Eleanor's mom got really sick with cancer and that kind of overtook her whole life and she ended up moving out of state. She moved to Florida so her mom could be by the beach in her final days and things like that. And you know she and Grey still continued to talk and be friends but then when they both went out to college things definitely changed. So we actually get to see that progression of their relationship from start to finish. And then now I'm in part two which is present day and Eleanor has found herself becoming a nanny to Grey's children. So many years have passed like 15 or 16 years have passed. Grey has two children. Grey has recently lost his wife to a tragic accident and he is grieving. And that's actually something that I found really refreshing about this story is that even though you know that this is a love story between Eleanor and Grey, like ultimately they're likely going to end up together. This is going to be a second chance romance and you are definitely rooting for that because you like both of the characters. You want both of them to be together. They're both wonderful people. But in this story, Grey is actively grieving. Like he is having a really rough time. He is not handling the death of his wife well. He misses her terribly. She was a wonderful woman. They had two children together. They had a beautiful life. And so Grey is suffering without her and you can definitely tell how much he's changed since he was with Eleanor back in their teenage days. He is definitely in a very very dark place and he is completely different from the man that Eleanor knew. Like he is unrecognizable and he is barely even acknowledging Eleanor's presence. He just wants Eleanor to be there and do her job and that's it. He doesn't want her to talk about the past. He doesn't want her to try to help him. He just wants to go to work and work all day and try to not think about the demons that are in his head. So I am loving this story so far. I really really enjoyed part one and I enjoyed seeing the development of their relationship. Grey truly was a cinnamon roll character during this time and now he's just such a dark and broody soul. Like he is a tortured person and he misses his wife. So I'm interested to see how this progresses because I think it's going to have to be kind of a situation where Grey breaks down and he relies on Eleanor. Like he finally starts to open up to Eleanor and Eleanor is just kind of there to help him heal. But I'm just really enjoying the story so far. It is very touching. It has a lot more themes of grief than I was even expecting and I just want to see how it progresses. And so I wanted to kind of come on here and share those thoughts before I lose them, you know, while they're fresh in my mind. I don't know if I'm going to have any additional thoughts once it's over, once I finish it tonight, but I will come on here and let you know. Also, I realized that I haven't really talked too much about The Way of Kings. That is just something that I'm reading very, very slowly over the next three months. I'm giving myself the entirety of the 90 days to finish it. I'm probably going to read maybe a chapter a day, if that. Y'all know that this is a very high epic fantasy. It is very complex. It is very detailed and it takes a lot of work to read. And so I'm just enjoying my time immersing myself in the world. It is definitely, because it's so long, a very slow burn. I have just now reached past the 200 page point. Not a whole heck of a lot has happened, but we are introduced to the main players in the story and we're just trying to figure out how all of it connects and how all of it's going to go. I'm never going to even try to explain Way of Kings to y'all. You're just going to have to go on and Google the synopsis because it is definitely, definitely complicated. But I'm enjoying it so far and I'm just waiting to get to a point where I don't want to put it down. That's just going to be what I'm reading throughout this entire readathon. So I'm probably not going to provide too terribly many updates, but I am reading it physically and then of course listening to Eleanor and Gray via audio. So I hope to finish that tonight and then it's on to the next. But for now y'all, I gotta get to the gym. So I will check in with you later. Hello friends, it is Thursday, April 13th and I owe you an update. I owe you a lot more b-roll footage too, but I just don't think that's gonna happen this week. There's nothing exciting going on. So unless I wanna film the minutia of everyday life, probably not gonna happen. So I apologize for all of the talking head clips. But since my last update, I did of course finish Eleanor and Gray. I finished it the same day that I did the last update. I don't really have any additional thoughts. I just really enjoyed the story overall. I thought it was very sweet and beautiful. It was very raw and emotional at times. I really loved the depiction of grief. It's also kind of a lesson in how if somebody you love passes away, it's not a betrayal to find somebody else that you love as well because you might love them as much, but you're going to love them differently and you're never going to forget the person that you lost. And so I just really overall thought that this was a very healthy, positive relationship. Overall, I thought it was very, very well done. And then I have now moved on to Key to My Heart by Leah Lewis. This is going to satisfy two Slayer Fest prompts. It's going to satisfy Jenny, a book that deals with grief, and it's also going to satisfy Sweets, a book that features music heavily. This follows our main character, Natalie, and she at one point had a career as kind of a musician. I believe she and her best friend were trying to write some kind of maybe like Broadway-esque type show, and she's a pianist, so that's what she did. And then she unexpectedly lost her husband two and a half years prior to the start of the story, but she's still very, very deep in her grief. She's really not living her life at all. She's just kind of stuck in this limbo and this funk, and it's not necessarily something that she wants to get out of either. She's not interested in moving on. She's not interested in meeting somebody else, but she's stuck in this cottage that she and her husband bought that's a real 
fixer upper and she doesn't really like being there but she doesn't want to sell it either because of the guilt so she's having a very hard time moving on or even wanting to move on but yet she doesn't want to stay where she is so it's a very unfortunate place to be and of course her friends and family are extremely worried about her because they kind of feel like two and a half years later that she should have at least started moving forward in some aspect of her life but she just hasn't she's really really stuck and as kind of some therapy there is a piano in a London train station that she plays at a couple of days a week like she just goes and she sits down and she plays whatever she feels in her heart and it's just therapeutic for her she really enjoys it and one day she notices that somebody is leaving sheet music there in the piano bench and at first she doesn't think anything of it but then she starts to notice that the songs are very personal to her and her husband but she doesn't know who is doing it and why all she knows though is that it's kind of giving her a little thrill a little shock of excitement that she hasn't had in her life in a while and so you're kind of following that wondering what's going on but yeah you're also following her as new people start coming into her life as she's starting to kind of branch out and build these relationships with people that she didn't know and it's really just sweet and wholesome and heartwarming there's not necessarily that same gut punch level that I was expecting in terms of the grief aspect like we know that she's feeling grief but I'm not necessarily feeling the grief the emotionality of it is not quite there for me it might get there overall I'm enjoying it but it's just not like the oof that I was expecting I haven't done really anything else on the magical readathon side I'm still like working some of that stuff out I think I'm gonna officially start in May I know it will be over by then but we're gonna see but anyway y'all this update has been really long already so I've got to get back to work I just knew that I owed you an update and so I will probably check in when I've actually finished key to my heart and then we'll probably start like wrapping up this vlog so I'll check in with you later like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me meant to be in the great outdoors forever free Saturday afternoon it is super loud and thunderstorming outside so you're probably going to be able to hear it in this video you're probably also going to hear some background noise coming from my husband's office because he is watching a video really loudly so I apologize about that but I needed to come on here and go ahead and give you an update because like I said it's Saturday afternoon I haven't updated at all today and I actually did do an update clip yesterday afternoon but I realized when I was editing it that I had like something hanging from my nose I don't know what it was but I was not going to put up the clip with something hanging from my nose. So I had to scrap it. And I also wanted to go ahead and do the end of this vlog. I wanted to do my final recent reads. There were about three books in March that I haven't wrapped up yet that I wanted to go ahead and wrap up in a vlog because I've decided to move away from the recent reads videos that I've been doing. Ooh, that was a big flash of lightning. If my face just flashed, that's because there's lightning right outside. In all honesty, the recent reads videos on my channel get almost no views, no attention whatsoever. And I want to be sure that I'm putting out content that y'all watch. I did post a poll asking if you wanted me 
to move away from recent reads to a formal end of month wrap up video and everybody who answered that poll seemed to want me to do recent reads but the numbers aren't reflecting that and I would really rather prefer to be doing something that I know like more people are used to. Recent reads is a lot more vague than say March wrap up, April wrap up, things like that. People can just click into a wrap up video and see what I've been reading for the whole month and they can click on the timestamps that they are interested in and so I think I'm just going to go ahead and do that. It's going to be a little bit painful because those videos are going to be long but I'm still committed to doing in-depth reviews for y'all in those videos. So whenever I do a monthly wrap up, just grab a cup of tea, settle in, and we'll do it. So I did want to go ahead and wrap up those last three books from March, but because it's so loud and thundery and because, you know, my husband's in the back. Did you hear that? that one was loud but because of all this noise I'm not going to be able to do it right now I think I'm going to go ahead and do it tomorrow in the start of the next vlog because I will be doing my formal filming at that time and I can just like be huddled in my office and do it now also though instead of closing out this vlog I also have to like redo the update that I did yesterday the update yesterday was just telling you that I had finished key to my heart by Leah Lewis and I ended up really enjoying that I mean I was enjoying it at the time of my previous update it just didn't have the emotional impact that I was hoping for and it really did have the emotional impact at the end this was just such a super sweet and heartwarming story. What I really loved about this overall are the people that are here as side characters in the story because they are what truly brings our main character Natalie back to life. She's just kind of like a zombie. She's living her life as a zombie. She's deep in her grief. She's not really ready or willing to move on but she needs to. She's stuck. And she meets a couple of new people in here that really bring her back to life and help her and help her heal. And then of course there are the sheets of music that are being left for her which ended up being you know a cute little story as well and stuff. And definitely near the end I got a little bit teary especially because one of these characters that I just mentioned did something extremely beautiful and nice for Natalie and it really just got me choked up. One of the main messages in here is definitely about how music is therapy and that's really what Natalie uses music for nowadays because she's not playing professionally anymore so she goes to this train station and she plays the piano and she does it just for her and she doesn't think anybody watches her but near the end she's proven wrong that her music meant so much to so many people and I just thought that that was beautiful and I love the idea of the healing power of music because I think it's so true and I think it's a universal bonding thing music no matter what kind of music you like you can have completely different music tastes from somebody but you can still bond over the amazing capacity of music for healing so ultimately I really did end up enjoying my experience with that one I gave it a solid four stars like I said, it was just an overall beautiful, really solid and heartwarming love story. And I definitely recommend, you know, of course, go in there cautious because it really is a story about grief and all of the conflicting emotions you have when you are trying to move on from grief, but like the guilt that you feel when you're trying to do that and all of that stuff. So overall, really solid story and really enjoyed it. I have gone ahead and decided to move on to The King of Crows by Libba Berry. This is the fourth and final book in the Diviner series. This wasn't originally what I was going to do. It's not what my heart is feeling, but I'm in very dangerous territory of not completing all of the challenges and the TBR game prompts that I pulled for myself in March because I've been so focused on Slayer Fest and not all of those challenges and prompts fit in with what I had on deck for Slayer Fest or in the order that I had them on deck for Slayer Fest and so I'm having to kind of move some things around and King of Crows is definitely something that I had on my Slayer Fest TBR but it wasn't something that I was going to read right away but since I did pull it for April I have to read it in April so I wanted to go ahead and get it out of the way and it will feel really good to get it done it will feel really good to get that series over and done with I am just a little annoyed because it's on the longer side it's like a 22 hour long audiobook so it'll be 11 hours of listening time and that's still like three or four days of reading so it's gonna like halt my momentum a little bit but I'm gonna go ahead and get it done I did start it a little bit on Friday night I haven't listened to it at all today but I'm about to turn it on and go do some laundry and things like that if you're not familiar with the diviner series this is a young adult paranormal series it is set in 1920s New York Manhattan and it follows a group of teenagers who have special powers they are called diviners and they are all basically banding together to fight this malevolent evil that wants to take them out and this malevolent evil is somebody who has come in from like a parallel realm and he is called the king of crows and he is out to defeat all diviners he's got like an army of ghosts and he wants to take them out because he knows that the diviners can stop them and so this is where it all kind of comes to a head and i'm looking forward to it even though i'm not quite in the mood for it but i think it's going to be okay i think it's going to be fine oh and yesterday at work you probably saw a little bit of b-roll footage of this i got 50 pages more into the way of kings like i was just in a reading mood and also i felt awake enough to be in a reading mood and calm enough to be in a reading mood so i was just just at work there was nothing else going on and so I just pulled out the book and I started to read and I started to annotate and it was just a great time I am getting to the point where I'm more further immersed in the world and so it's a lot easier for me to jump back into it I'm understanding a lot more like I said I am annotating it I'm taking a lot of notes I'm just trying to connect a lot of dots because it is super complicated but in a good way you know so making good progress on that I'm nearing the 300 page mark and then the plan for this weekend is basically just to listen to King of Crows I don't even know if I'm gonna finish it this weekend because like I said I haven't listened to it at all today so I'm gonna go ahead 
and close out this vlog and get to doing some chores and listening. I will probably not check in with you guys again until tomorrow when I start the next vlog since it's so late in the day today. Really all I've been doing this morning is editing. Like it's taken me a couple of hours just to get to the point where I'm almost done editing the vlog and then I passed out. I took a nap. I was so so tired. I just needed to stop and rest. We are not leaving our house this weekend. Thank God for that. All right y'all as per usual this update has been long enough. I need to go ahead and get it uploaded into my computer so I can finish editing it. Get this vlog ready for tomorrow. So with that I'm going to close out this vlog and I will check in with you at the start of the next one. Bye guys. Thank you.